it runs off parking lot surfaces, it runs off of lawns, it runs off of any time it storms and we just had a good deal of rain in the last week and you can bet that a lot of what ran off, regardless of what's there, you get an accumulation of a lot of toxins, pathogens, contaminants, and excess nutrients. And that's really hard to do something about. A healthy Long Island Sound has a certain amount of nitrogen naturally occurring. The problem is when we put too much nitrogen into that system, it throws it askew. Nobody lives particularly well without oxygen. Typically what we're removing are three nutrients from the water, and those would be carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus. So, so our, our knowledge of how to clean water has really, really advanced, but the application of that is lagging behind. Now I, I spend a lot of time in northern New England where the Connecticut starts, and uh, you know, I'm always thinking about that when I'm, when I'm in the woods, you know, that these little streams are really, you know, the start of the, the mighty river, you know. So, um, you know, treatment plant operator's job is they're a steward, environmental steward of, uh, you know, all the water going through the environment. We're no longer insular. We don't live, I don't just live at the mouth of the Connecticut River. I live in a watershed. I live in a place that, uh, that takes freely of the services that ecosystems provide, that healthy ecosystems provide. And that's true no matter where you live. And if you live in Vermont or in New Hampshire, you too are a beneficiary of ecosystem services, you know, clean water, clean air, uh, temperature regulation, all the, all of the things that healthy ecosystems provide. And as we start to see the diminishment of those, we're gonna to start to see the collective diminishment of those resources for everybody.